Right, so here's our first question for the evening. Um, you guys can read the question yourself, but I just want to let you know that they've told us that AD, DC, and BE are tangents. Okay, so this line, um, this line, and this line, those are tangents to the circle. Uh, what else do they say that's important? Okay, nothing else is important there. Now, they've asked us to prove that these two triangles are similar. So DAH, DAH, uh, let's highlight that. There's DAH. Um, okay. And then the other triangle is OCH, OCH. So that one is over here. There we go. Now, guys, they want us to prove that they are similar. So what does that mean? It means that we need three angles. Remember, that's what similarity is. We need three angles. OK, so let's have a look. What we can say is that this angle over here is 90 degrees. Um, 90 degrees. Why can I say that? Let's quickly say that angle A is equal to 90 degrees because it's a tangent touching a diameter or a radius. Can you see that? It's a tangent and a radius. So we can say tangent is always perpendicular to the radius, OK? And then we can say the same thing in the purple triangle. Can you see it over here? There's a 90 degree over there as well, because there's a tangent and a radius of a circle. So we can also say that angle C is equal to 90 degrees. That's also because of tangent perpendicular to radius. OK, so we have one angle so far. We need another two more. OK, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, guys, can you see it? Um, the purple triangle and the red triangle are both making use of this angle over here. Can you see it's in both? So what we can say is that um, H2 is equal to, I'm just using different colors to try and make it easier for you guys, H2 and H2. And the reason for that is uh, common, common. Now, remember, when you have two angles already, you don't have to find a third one. Well, you don't have to go look for it. All you do is you say that it's because of the sum of the angles in a triangle, OK? so. Um, that would, for example, be angle D. Angle D would be the same as angle O2. Why? Because of sum of angles in a triangle. You know how the angles in a triangle always have to add up to 180. And so for that reason, we can say that these two triangles, DAH, must be similar to triangle OCH and our reason for that is angle, angle, angle. OK, guys, so that's a nice four mark question. I hope that that made sense. Let's move on to the next part, which is the same question, but um, just a different part of it. OK, now let's quickly see what we've done so far. We've just proved that triangle DAH was similar to OCH. Let's remember that from the previous one. Was it OCH? Yes. OK, guys, so in a test, whenever they give you a question like this, my advice is to always do the following. Take the previous question that you've just done, which is that, and then make your ratios. So we already know that triangle DAH is similar to triangle OCH. We already proved that. So remember then, what you want to do now is you want to make your ratios. So you want to say DA over OC is equal to AH over CH, which is equal to DH over OH. And remember that the reason for that is that the triangles are um, similar. So you can say similar triangles like that. Guys, that is one of the biggest pieces of advice that I could ever give you in similarity, is that whenever you've proven that these triangles are similar, 
always write out these ratios over here. Okay. Okay, I just want to quickly go back one step. Um, oh, I should have said that angle A is equal to angle C over here. Okay. All right, guys. So remember, we've now taken these ratios. What I would then tell you to do is to circle whatever they are asking in the question. So they're asking for OH. There it is. They're asking for AO. Okay, there is no AO, but that's okay. Then we look for DH. Here it is. And then we look for DC but there is no DC. So we have a little bit of a problem because we don't know where AO is and we don't know where DC is. But guys, what they like to do in the exams is the following. Have a look carefully, 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 carefully. If you look at AO, it's a radius. So we can say that AO and OC are the same. So we can say AO, let's write it over here. AO is equal to OC because they are radii, okay? So what that means is that I can now replace this one with AO, right? Because they are now the same. So I can, I can take OC away and I can replace it with AO. So I can put an AO here. Or let's actually, um, let's put this back. Um, this was OC. And let's rather do this. Now we can say DA over AO. See how I've changed it there now? Equals to AH over CH equals to DH over OH. Now we also need to look for, we also need to look for DC. DC, where is DC? Um, oh, okay, guys, check this out. This one's quite interesting. Look at DC. Remember that when you have a common point and you have two tangents, from the same point, their distances or their lengths are always the same. Do you remember that from grade 11? When you have a common point and you have a tangent and a tangent, their lengths are always the same. So we can say that DC is going to be the same as DA. The reason for that is tangents, tans from common point. So I can now say, um, I can now replace this one with DC, with, with DC, right? So DC over AO equals to AH over CH, which equals to DH over OH. So now all of a sudden we are in a good position because now we've got DC and that's what they wanted over here. We've got AO, that's what they wanted over here. We've got DH. Uh, there we go. And we've got OH. There we go. So now we can just go write that out so long. So we can say DC over AO is equal to DH over OH. And then guys, if you just take this, you can somehow rearrange it so that it looks like that. So I'm just going to say, therefore, OH is equal to AO times DH over DC. Okay, that is a very typical exam question. I've seen many, many, many exam questions that look like that. Excellent, guys. So here's another six mark question. Um, so prove that BF squared is equal to JF times AF. Now, guys, here's my advice to you. Whenever they have a square, it could be the following. It could be similarity of two triangles which both use BF. That is normally how you can get a BF squared. It's by finding two triangles and both of the triangles must use BF. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. So let's go have a look. So we definitely wanna go look for BF. Where's BF? Here it is. We also want to look for JF, which is this one here. And then we also want to look for AF. Where's AF? Oh, here's AF. AF is a long one. Oh, and they also said if BA is drawn. I forgot about that. If BA is drawn. Can you guys see the two triangles? 
So um, the two triangles that we are going to use will be um, this one and then the big red one. OK, but now, guys, in the test, um, in the test, you need to explain that to the teacher. You need to tell the teacher, um, I am going to be using these two triangles because they weren't very nice. Can you see in this question here, they told us which triangles to use, but in this one, they don't tell us anything. So what we do is we say in triangle, uh, ABF, don't worry about the order. It's not important right now. We're just telling the teacher which triangles we are working in. BJF. It doesn't matter. The, the order doesn't matter at all right now. Okay. Now, remember, we are going to try prove that these two triangles are similar. So that means we need three angles. So have a look here. Can you see that they both use this angle F? They both use angle F. So we can say angle F is equal to angle F, and that is common. What else? What else? Ooh, they love to use tan cord. That's another piece of advice I can give. They love tan cord. So I know a lot of you don't like tan cord. I'm probably going to get a comment or two now. Um, but tan cord, um, the way it works is the following. Here's a tangent. Here's a tangent. And here's a cord. What you do is you find the angle that is in between those two. So that is B2. Can you see it? Now, I want you to now take your, put your finger on uh, the two parts that, the two ending parts over there. And then I want you to drag your fingers to the same point. And so like, let them come together at the same point. And that'll be A. So what the tan chord theorem tells us is that this angle, B2, must be the same as angle A. Okay, whoops, ah, oh, I can't undo on PowerPoint, it's so annoying. Okay, so what we can say is that angle B2 is going to be equal to angle A, and that is the tan chord theorem. Now, guys, remember that in a similarity, when you are proving two triangles are similar, the third angles are always the same because of the sum of the angles in a triangle. You don't have to go look for anything else. So in the red triangle, what have we not used? This confuses students like crazy. Look inside the red triangle. What have we not used? Well, we have used this angle. We have used this angle. So where is the angle that we haven't used? It's this one. Can you see it? It's that big red one. So I'm going to call that angle ABF. ABF. So angle ABF. Now in the purple triangle, what angle have we not used? So here's the purple triangle. Well, we haven't used this angle. So that can be called angle J, angle J. Although J could mean a few things. So let's say BJF, BJF, BJF. And that's just going to be sum of angles in a triangle. So we can say, therefore, triangle ABF. Now, guys, this is where you want to get your order perfect. So I wrote down the first triangle. It doesn't matter what the order is for that one. But now make sure that you match up the next triangle perfectly. Otherwise, everything's incorrect. So angle A in the red one went with angle B in the purple one. Remember that? That was the tan chord one. Angle B in the red one was, where, was the one that went with angle J in the purple one. So we'll put J next. Angle F in the red one went with angle F in the purple one. There we go. And now we say angle, angle, angle. We're not done, guys. We still need to get to this. So what do you think we do now? Now we make our three fractions. Those three fractions are so important. You are going to get that in so many questions uh, in your exam papers. So what we do is we say AB over BJ is equal to BF over JF equals to AF over BF. And then I must give a reason for that. And the most popular reason that I see these days is similar triangles. Right, now what we do is we see the magic happening. So we see BF, so let's go find BF. Oh, would you look at that? It happened twice. Wow, but that's because, look at this, both of these triangles are using BF. That is why we get a BF 
squared. Then we look for a JF, 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 there you are. And then we look for an AF, there we go. So you see guys, um, now what we do is we just, uh, we say therefore, uh, we do some cross multiplication and we find out that BF squared is equal to AF multiplied by JF. Perfect. It's quite nice, eh? So that's typically what happens. Whenever you have um, a, a square, it's usually two triangles that are using the same side. Not always, but most times.